Are you ready? Let's build the Z-axis so we can start making chips. Stick around. Hey everyone, I'm Scott, Edge of 3D, and today we're going to continue on this Milo Mini Mill V1.5 by LDO Motors. Fabrico sent it to me. It's from the Brilliant Minds over at Millennium Machines. And we're going to get this uh, Z-axis done so we can finish this thing up and start making some chips in time for Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. So let's jump over here to the documents and show a couple of inconsistencies I found in my kit. So you're going to see here it calls for a pair of 4080 by 260 C-beams. I went through all my stuff, and I can't find any 480 by 260. So when I was going through the box looking, I've got 4080 C-channel by 320, by 320, by 250, and by 120. So I'm going to assume this 320 is what is used in place of the 260. I don't know what that's going to do to the build. And, of course, this is all for printed parts, which the LDO Motors kit comes with the plates, as you can see here, all machined. And there was an extra 2020 extrusion in the box. So what I'm going to do is use this to put here to line up these plates. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of angle brackets on here, just two T-nuts, bolt that to there, and use that to butt these up against tight so that and I'll do the same on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, like everything else, anything that needs heat sets or has sacrificial floors, um, I've already done that ahead of time. So let's grab a couple of T-nuts. So the idea behind that is eventually this piece here will slip down onto the Y, actually, yeah, it'll slip down onto the Y, and the spacing from here to here, this will be our dummy Y, basically. And then we're just going to put two more in here just to keep this lined up and then we'll start all of our heat center our uh, roll-ins in here and just basically count the holes so there's two four six eight ten twelve so we need to load twelve into heat into these it'll be the this rail here and this rail here okay so we have all of our t-nuts in and pre-positioned. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up here. I'm going to grab a couple of uh, M5 by 12s for down here. Because these are going to come back off. Now, the directions right here call for M5 by 12s. The box right here tells me I don't have near enough M5 by 12s to do all these, but I've got a whole bunch of M5 by 10s. So I think on the LDO kit, the intention is to use M5 by 10s on these. That's what I'm going to do until somebody tells me different. If I'm wrong, drop it in the comments down below, and I will add an edit to the video to say I was wrong. Now, as long as we're on this side here, we'll go ahead and I've already preloaded the nuts in there, but we'll go ahead and get this piece 
in place and it lines up flush across the top here. So I'm going to get the T-nuts position and then I'll use a one, two, three block. So I'm going to get them positioned. I'm just going to drop these in, not tighten them down. And I'm going to take a one, two, three block and reach up underneath here. And hold the one, two, three block tight to the top here. And push those up snug against it and go ahead and tighten them down. Now, the location of this piece isn't overly critical because it doesn't actually serve anything other than a spacer to space this next C channel off there. So now the next C channel goes right here and it calls for 18 millimeters offset here. So we're going to go ahead and get all the roll-in nuts loaded up and then we'll get this set at the 18 millimeter and we'll put all those on. Now one thing I'll point out here right quick while I'm doing this, make sure the C-channel faces out. Your lead screw will actually run down inside there. So I have a few started. I'm going to go ahead and get the 18 millimeter set right here. So we'll just take this, bring it to 18, lock it in. So in case you didn't know this with a caliper you know instead of trying to measure like this or measure like this you have another measurement on here and that is from here to here and that's what I'm doing is I'm taking this so basically just slide this here up against this and bring this back till it touches here and that's got your 18 millimeters set right there We'll go through and drop all the rest of them in and snug them up. So now I'm going to take this off the bottom here. And we're going to flip this over and do exactly the same thing on this side. So when you're doing this, make sure to remember when you have it flipped over that this is now back here. Because Obviously, these up here aren't going to do us any good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and snug all these up. And just like everything else, they should be Loctited. But until I get the machine completely built and check square on everything... I'm going to avoid Loctiting stuff that I might have to remove later. And I know that there's some places on this Z-axis where there's some cable chains and stuff that mount to the sides here. So I wind up having to go back and take those screws out. All right, let's see what it calls for next here. Okay, let's go ahead and get the bearing block into this piece here. And that's going to bolt on down here. So let's find our bearing. And that calls for M5 by 12s. We will Loctite these the same way we've Loctited all the rest of them that go into a piece of plastic. Um, take, put a little Loctite on the screw. And take my finger and roll it up into the thread so that it doesn't all drag off into the plastic. And we'll just get all four of these started. Alright, let's see what it calls for next. That's the ballast box. I don't think we're going to mess with that at this point in time. But let me grab it here just to show you. This is the ballast box. And the idea behind this ballast box is it slides down in here. And, yeah, I'm not really sure what the, yeah, we're just going to leave it in there because once we put the motor up here, once we add this, 
there's no way to get that back in there so I'm gonna leave that in there and eventually I will fill it with lead shot and cap it with some epoxy for weight so we've already put the heat sets in this block we do need to put the uh, brass screws in there so we'll do that right quick so now I'm going to take the lead screw here pull that back out just a little bit this one's already out just a little bit we'll then go ahead and take our m3 by 10s little dab of loctite and just run them down till they just touch on this side we'll go ahead and thread our lead screw through when it gets to the other side, it might push it out just a little bit before it jumps in there, which it did. Once it's through, then we're going to want to go ahead and get these screw holes lined up. So now that we got that in there, um, actually that feels pretty good. I'm just going to add about an eighth of a turn preload to each side here. It's pretty tight, but it'll, it'll work. It's backing off just a tiny bit. Once it runs in, that should uh, those should settle in pretty good. So we need to go ahead and I guess thread it all the way in there. According to this, and then it calls for a lock collar 13 millimeters up from the bottom. So let's go find our lock collars. Just make note that this is the top. This is the bottom, and the lock collar goes up 13 millimeters from the bottom. All right, next. We stand it up in here where it shows the rails are already in place, and we obviously don't have any rails there yet, so we're going to deal with that next. And again, like everything else on here, once I get everything squared up and trimmed and everything, I will come back through and one by one I will remove screws, lock tight them, and replace them. So let's go ahead and get this put back in place. Drop it down between the carriages like that. We'll go ahead and get that started first and those are m5 by 16s now we'll go ahead and get all 16 of these m3 by 5s into the carriages okay let's see what we have next here looks like we're going to put the top on and we're going to need a locking collar Okay, now we're going to set our motor up, so we need the pulleys and belt, which are right here. And the motor's got a flat on it, you can see right there. So I'm going to go ahead and line one of these up with the flat. And just snug it. Because we're going to have to come back and adjust it so the belt rides the right way. And I'm not even going to tighten this one down. I'm just going to get it started in there. Problem is that's going to want to pull over frontwards. But there's our belt. And it calls for... say here m5 by 20s with m5 washers and m5 nylon hex nuts jump back over here and look and see what this has uh none of this really applies to the ldo kit um at this point it's having us put the uh clamp on and the chain 
which we can go ahead and throw this on there for now. Got the heat sets in there, screws in there, and it just calls for M5 washers and M5 nylock Kex nuts. So, the problem I have is there's no good way to stand it up like this to work on it because it's just going to fall over frontwards. So I'm going to take this back off. And we're going to go down here and see what it says about bolting this up to the main frame. Nothing. So I guess we're on our own to figure that out. When we get all this out of the way. We'll go ahead and grab the main frame here. So it's going to take four per side T-nuts. I should specify that. We'll go ahead and get four preloaded on each side. And then we're going to set this up here. Kind of eyeball it to line them up on each side. I'm just going to go ahead and use them 5 by 12s in there. And again, that's something that really needs to be Loctited. But until I get the machine all finished up and attached to the base and square everything up, I'm not going to Loctite anything that I might have to loosen up to try to re-square the machine. Now we can go ahead and slip the spindle mount on, even though I don't have a spindle. So now what we have, unfortunately, the camera's in the entirely wrong place to see. But we need to put our cable chain mount on the side of here. Calls for M5 by 12s, and I am not going to Loctite these in. I did print out the supplemental LDO motors mount, and what it does is just this part here is a little bit taller so the cable can't flop over this way. And then I'm going to have to go to the LDO motors and look and see where they mounted there, because I know we have at least one part here that mounts out here somewhere. Maybe it's this one here. Actually, it looks like they mount into these holes. Well, that's self-explanatory. So we have these holes right here. And the other end of the cable chain mount and the helper to keep it from flopping over. Go right in there, also M5 by 12s. Well, that one is not going to fit in that hole. So I got to go look and see if there's a different one that was supposed to be printed for LDO and get the heat sets out of there and reset them in another one because that absolutely will not fit up in there. It's too large. So that's it for now. Um, Got a little bit of management work to do here on the cable chain. Next, we will build the base that this all sets on that houses all the electronics. Um, it's getting to the point now where heaving it up for pictures is getting a little difficult, but there we go. She's getting heavy, which is to be expected. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you that take the time to watch these videos. If you have some comments about the way I built this, or if you see something I did wrong, or something I should do different, or you have ideas to how to make things go faster, uh, please drop a comment down below. I'll try to read them all. And uh, thanks once again for taking the time to watch my videos. If you like it, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe. If you want to know when the next one drops, hit the bell icon. And as always, Peace out.